This demo picks up from the previous linear statics and normal modes analyses and extends into an investigation of the dynamic behavior of the bracket model with the transient response analysis. The bracket model is a sheet metal structure that is fixed at the base and has an electric motor attached. The motor is modeled using a mass element representing the mass of the motor attached to a node positioned at the motor center of gravity. The motor CG node is linked to the bracket at the attachment hole with a spider of rigid elements. The presence of the motor completely changes the dynamic characteristics of the bracket structure. The statics analysis showed that the bracket structure was not heavily loaded and the deflection of the motor CG node was 0.345 mm and less than the maximum allowable of 1 mm. However, there may be some base vibration that could affect the dynamic behavior of the bracket. This transient response will show the dynamic response of the bracket subjected to a single 25 Hz sine pulse applied to the base of the structure. As this is a continuation of the previous frequency response analysis, all we need to do with this model is set up the transient dynamic loading definition. We select Direct Transient Response Analysis, leaving the previous structural damping coefficient value. The system damping frequency is 25 Hz, close to the first natural frequency, and we enter the data required for the time step definition. Now we turn our attention to the position of the loading and move the model around so that we can access the central base node. Let's expand the present load definition of the model info tree. The previous frequency response analysis had a force defined at the base node that we need to delete. For this transient response, we need to pick the node in the center of the spider of rigid elements and define a unit displacement in the z-direction. We also need to set up a time-based function for the sine pulse definition. The first load to be applied will be the gravity load, and so we'll allow a period of time to let the structure settle down before applying the sine pulse. The sine pulse can be defined quite concisely using the equation definition method in the function definition dialog. We'll also add some other points to complete the function definition. The data entered will define a single 25 Hz sine pulse that will be applied after one second, and we'll set the analysis to solve at 0 .005 second time steps. We can visually verify the position of the displacement load by toggling the view loads icon in the view toolbar. With the model setup now completed, we can go on to create a new analysis set for the transient response. Scrolling down the model info tree, we right-click on Analyses, select Manage, and click New to create a new analysis set definition. We can enter a title and set the analysis type to Transient Response. It's also a good idea to check that we're picking up the right boundary conditions, and we can do that by expanding the relevant entries in the Analysis Set Manager dialog. Once we're happy that everything is OK, we can set the analysis off to run. NX NASTRAN now starts to run and perform the analysis. When the analysis completes, the results are automatically read into the FEMAP database ready for post-processing. With the analysis now complete, the results can be viewed, starting with the View Select icon in the View toolbar. This is where we can view the results at the point of interest, the motor CG node, across the entire time history in an XY plot. Here we select the starting output set at time zero, total translation, the CG node itself, and start and finish time steps for the plot. You can see the gravity load applied initially, and after a period of one second has elapsed and the structure has settled down, the sine pulse base displacement is applied. In the reaction of the structure in the subsequent time steps, you can see that the CG point reaches a maximum displacement of 2.628 millimeters. This is a dynamic magnification factor of over 7.5 times the static deflection. Clearly, for an allowable deflection of 1 mm, this loading would require a redesign of the bracket structure. Let's go now and look at an animation of the displacements through the time history using FEMAP's Animate Multiset Deform Style. We'll select a starting output set at 0.9 seconds, just before the application of the sine pulse displacement. The final output set will be the last one at 2 seconds. This whole sequence would play in just over a second, so you can see that it slowed down quite a lot. This demonstration shows that in many cases, a simple static analysis review is not enough. FEMAP with NX NASTRAN can take the analysis further and model a more realistic representation of the design and its working environment to give more accurate and complete answers.